up guys, David here, one, two, and two, and it's List Day. Ah yes, List Day, and today we're gonna be looking at the top 10 best fusion monsters in all of Yu-Gi-Oh. Yes, we are continuing my special edition reboot, remake, line of videos for some of the most viewed videos on my channel. No, this is not just a ploy to get my analytics up. The game has progressed significantly since those last videos came out, so uh, the fact that they still get a lot of traction in the community and people are still watching them despite the fact they're way out of date is like, oh, that's kind of dumb. We better update these, I guess, maybe. This is going to be a great list because uh, I'm full of uh, Mexican food and this really, really boozy sangria. Ah. Fusion! Fusion! Rules for this list are basically just, is it good? Is it bad? Put them in order! It's the best of list! However, we're gonna try to keep the effects rather varied uh, in an attempt to make it kind of interesting. If you don't see your favorite fusion monster on this list, make sure you join that Discord link in the description below so that you can get in on the list making fun so that you can get me to say whatever the hell it is that you want me to. <laughs> dance, monkey, dance! But without further ado, here is the top 10 best fusions in Yu-Gi-Oh! Number 10, Millennium Eyes Restrict. Uh, Thousand Eyes Restrict, if you want. Millennium Eyes Restrict is a great fusion monster. Sadly, it never gets legitimately fusion summoned by its own fusion card. It tends to get made by instant fusion. So the amount of play it has seen has dropped off the face of the earth because instant fusion got limited. However, that does not change the fact that it's a very powerful fusion monster. This level one bad boy says, quick effect. Once per turn when your opponent activates a monster effect, you can target one effect monster your opponent controls or in their graveyard, equip it to this card, then this thing gains the attack and defense of the monster equipped. Also, and here's why we care, monsters with that equipped name cannot attack and their effects are negated and their activated effects are negated. Meaning that instant fusion was a great option if you want to set a pick for your plays and avoid your opponent's hand traps. All you have to do is open an instant fusion and that means all your plays will probably go through. It doesn't hit every hand trap, like, you know, infinite impermanence is obviously a trap card, so that is what it is. But the fact that it pretty much eliminates most of your opponent's options for stopping your plays meant this card saw tons of play and, uh, never in its own deck. <laughs> Number nine is Chimera Tech Mega Fleet. What you need to make this bad boy is one Cyber Dragon and one monster in the extra deck monster zone. And what is really cool is those materials can be on either side of the field, meaning you can fuse with one of your opponent's monsters. No offense, but I think it's kind of gross. Just like a kaiju, an inherent special summon using one of your opponent's things as material is extremely good because it's extremely hard to stop. It gets a power boost depending on how many materials you use for it. It tends to hit the field with 2400. It's a great way of getting rid of that big bad link monster your opponent has sitting in their extra deck monster zone. With the advent of Master Rule 5, it's obviously not quite as powerful as it used to be because this would also hit like, you know, Xyz and Synchros and things like that, but it still is a solid option to use against a link board. And the other Chimera tech is great if you're playing against a machine deck, so I'll stick him in here as another parentheses entry. Entry. <laughs> parentheses entry. Hmm. Oh, this is not just wine. This, there's tequila in this. It's gonna be one of those lists. What I really like about Mega Fleet specifically, though, is it doesn't have to be Cyber Dragon. It's just a Cyber Dragon monster. So, like, you can use Toon Cyber Dragon, which is <laughs> really just. That is the cutest thing. It is so cheesy. Next up is the bane of all of the graveyard dependent decks, Master Hero Dark Law. Nothing says f you, zombies, like <laughs> Dark Law. It's incredibly disrespectful. A one sided macro cosmos sounds strong. Summoned by a quick play spell card, even stronger. Must be summoned by Mask Change. Sure, it's a quick play spell. There's also Mask Change 2, which counts as Mask Change 1 when it's used, so it also works. And Mass Change 2 allows you to use non-hero monsters, so that's cool. Any card sent to your opponent's graveyard is banished instead. It's Macrocosmos. 
broke. But it does have this other effect, that once per turn, if your opponent adds a card from their deck to their hand, except during their draw phase or the damage step, because, you know, we do a lot of searching during the damage step, you can banish one random card from your opponent's hand. Holy crap! Nothing makes you feel worse about using your reinforcements of the army card than seeing a Dark Law on the other side of the field, because there is a good chance it's gonna just banish what you searched. <laughs> Uh, not only that, but it like activates after you've done the search, which means that if you have nothing in your hand, you can't even avoid it. Yeah, this thing's a giant pain in the ass and a really powerful floodgate boss monster to have in your extra deck, bolstering what is already an impressive line of really powerful fusion monsters that heroes have at their disposal. And the hits just keep coming. Coming and they don't stop coming and they don't stop coming and they don't stop coming. With Invoke Mechaba. Mechaba? Everyone pronounces this one differently. Ah, Alistair the Triggered is just like one of the best fusion engines that we have in this game. You can stick Invoked in pretty much anything. <laughs> It doesn't really matter. <laughs> Whether it's good or not is a good question, but you can do it. It kind of just does its own thing. And if you got lights and you can make Mechaba, then you're, you know, you're doing better than most. He's got a nasty effect that says when your opponent uses a Spell Trapper Monster effect, you can send that same type of card, Spell Trapper Monster, to the graveyard as a cost in order to negate that activation. And if you do, destroy it. Wait, it's not destroy, it's banish. Holy crap. The fact that it is not a generic discard is probably how you banish balance out the it banishes whatever it's negating Gamasil style effect. <laughs> Normally doesn't matter. Not only that, but you can use the Alistair in your hand to defend it against battle because it isn't the strongest thing in the world. And it's also a light machine, which means that it does have odd synergy in a couple of decks. So there's also that option given to you, which is just also kind of neat. I just wait for the day they stick this thing in dual links. I think, you can, I think you can have Nova go into this thing too, right? When it dies, look, that, that's, that's kind of cute, I suppose. Number six? Is six where we on? El Shadal Construct. An oldie, but a goodie. Construct's a weird one because she hasn't been actually particularly relevant in a little while. Every once in a while it comes popping back into the meta, especially because we recently got that El Shadal uh, structure deck thing. But she also didn't really have much of a format due to uh, the tribe infecting virus. So it's a little hard to say how meta relevant she actually is. Uh, rest in peace, pretty much everything that's come out in the last year. <laughs> I'm sorry, Eldritch Golden Lord, you were the Lord of no format. <laughs> However, you really can't poo-poo El Shadal Construct's legacy in the actual game of Yu-Gi-Oh. She, uh, she a good girl, despite the fact that I don't think she's actually a real person. She's some sort of strange automaton. Made of one Shadal monster and one light monster, you must first fusion summon this card. So you, you can't cheese it out of your extra deck. If this card is special summoned, you can send one Shadal monster from your deck to the graveyard. If you know what Shadals do, they all have graveyard effects. So, uh, yeah, that, that seems like it's a good engine card for the deck. Also, at the start of the damage step, if this card battles a special summon monster, destroy that monster. Ah, non-targeting removal. Nice. Nice! It will be using its effect to remove key monsters from your opponent's side of the board. That also happens during the damage step, so it's just a weird time for it to be using an effect, so it's also a little bit awkward to stop. And if the card is sent to the graveyard, you can add a Shadal spell or trap from your graveyard to your hand. Most of the time, it's one of the fusion cards. There's a reason why this card was him and Han on the ban list for a while, because it's just, again, a solid engine and boss monster for the Shadal archetype. Speaking of him and Han on the ban list, ABC Buster Dragon. ABC, baby, it's not at three. <laughs> idiot. Boy, I'm gonna hate editing this. I don't know who it is over at Konami that really hates ABC Buster Dragon because the card is not broken. It is a fantastic boss monster, but it is not broken. I don't know why we keep moving it around on the ban list. It's a joke at this point. <laughs> don't let the fact that it is unduly limited all the damn time Take away from the fact that yes, it is indeed a powerful boss monster. Made of A, B, and C, go figure. Must be special summoned from your extra deck using the above three and you banish those things as material. It's not a fusion summon. It's a, it's a con contact fusion. 
Excellent. It's actually not even a real fusion summon. It is a special sub whatever. Once per turn, during your other player's turn, you can discard one card, target one card in the field, banish it. Nice. That is some solid spot removal. Not only that, but all the, the A, B, and Cs, they do stuff in the grave, so discard them isn't like the end of the world. It's pretty solid. And then also has a second quick effect, which is, well, frankly, fantastic. Most monsters only have one, if any, but this guy got two. Once per turn, you contribute this card to special summon three banished union machine light. Is it, is it light? Yeah. It, the A, B, and C. You attribute this thing, you summon its materials. That's that's what you're doing. You, you don't technically have to by language of the card, but most of the time you, you, you tag out for A, B, and C. Which means that just like your old chain beat wind up rabbit, anytime your opponent would throw some sort of removal at this thing, you can just tag out for its materials and make that effect fizzle and then just presumably make it again. It's why I think somebody at Konami dislikes this card so much because it's a pain in the ass to remove from the field. <laughs> Like I said, it's an absolutely fantastic card, and it's a damn shame that uh, somebody at Konami seems to dislike it so much. It is not broken, it is just very good. But now we are starting to get into the broken stuff, which could either be banned or stay banned, and I don't think anyone would have a problem with it. Supreme King Dragon Starving Venom. Two Dark Pendulum Monsters must first be fusion summoned or special summoned which is uh, interesting that you can do both. Basically one requiring a fusion card like polymerization and one not. It matters if you wish to bring it back from the graveyard later, I guess. If you choose not the fusion summon, you gotta tribute the guys on your board. Sweet. And then once per turn, while this bad boy's on the field, you can target another monster on your field or in the graveyard, the one you care about, hint, hint. This card's name becomes that monster's original name and it changes its effect to that monster as well. And it also can do piercing damage. <laughs> Who cares? It copies effects in the graveyard, which lends itself to stupid FTKs. It's really strange that when you allow one card to use another card's effect and that was never originally intended to be able to use that card's effect, it really changes how the, the entire game works and it leads you to these dumb FTKs. It's banned, it can stay banned. I don't think anyone's gonna care. I care. Uh, I'm not even sure what, I guess Preda Plants were supposed to, this is supposed to be for that. I don't even know what they're intended to do with it. That's not their dumb FTK. So please enlighten me in the comments what the intended use is. <laughs> I'm actually curious. It is a big dumb dragon. That's cool. And it, it'll certainly win you a game. So you can't say it's bad. All right, I'm going to need another sip of this stuff for this one. Ugh. Are you guys ready for everyone's favorite one card combo? Red Eyes Dark Dragoon. Nah. You must have seen this one coming. What makes this card really good? Well, it has a million effects, all of which are powerful, but that's not really what makes this thing so strong. What makes this thing so strong is it can be summoned with Red Eyes Fusion, which you might say, dang, Red Eyes Fusion's a terrible fusion card. It locks you out of doing like pretty much everything for the rest of your turn. That sucks. I mean, yes, it, it does suck. It's incredibly disrespectful. Granted, Dragoon's really powerful, so if that is all you had to do to summon this thing, it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. He's very strong, but no. Proto Plant Verte Anaconda allows you to dump a fusion card out of your deck and then copy its effect, allowing you to just freebie summon Dragoon. What do you know? When one card copies the effects of a different card, it leads to obnoxious crap, and it's also a Preda plant again. Somebody's got a lot of explaining to do, uh, Preda plants. Stop breaking stuff. <laughs> but okay, so you managed to cheese out Dragoons onto the board. What the hell do you get for it? Well, it can't be destroyed by card effects. It also, neither player can target this thing with card effects. Okay, once per turn during your main phase, you can destroy one monster your opponent controls and inflict direct damage to them equal to that monster's original attack. Hmm, that's, that's a spicy meatball. You can use this effect up to the number of normal monsters you use to make it. Hmm, well, what, what, what is it made of? Dark Magician and one dragon, or specifically, Red Eyes Black Dragon. It just had to specifically call out one dragon. The fact that you can use any dragon is really, really cheesy, but the fact that it, all, that it calls out a specific dragon means you can do cheesy crap with it, like Red Eyes Fusion. And only what do you know, you used two normal monsters to make it, so you can pop two cards a turn. And then, icing on the cake, it also has a quick effect, effect negation. Discard a card. When your opponent activates a spell trap or monster effect, negate it. And if you do, destroy that card. And if you do that, oh, it's one of those 
fun ones. This card gains a thousand attack power on top of its already huge 3000 body. Why did they make this thing? The card is not unbeatable. It's very powerful. A kaiju will do a good job at getting rid of it. The problem is when we don't have it limited in any capacity so you can just make another one. What a pain in the ass. Holy crap, this thing is strong. And had it not been for the fact that the next two are just also really broken, this could have easily been number one. Hot take, number two did nothing wrong, Thunder Dragon Colossus. Must be fusion summoned or special summoned. Ha, huh, it's that thing again. During the turn, a thunder monster has used its effect in the hand, like for instance, Thunder Dragon, by tributing a thunder effect monster. Or you just use polymerization. In which case, it's made of Thunder Dragon and one effect monster. This is awesome! What a pain in the ass this card can be! 2600 body, battle or effect destruction protection by banishing a guy in your grave, and an effect that prevents your opponent from adding cards from their deck to their hand, except by drawing. Means that this thing is a giant pain in the butt for any person playing against a Thunder Dragon strategy. Again, I don't think it's completely unbeatable that destruction protection is pretty annoying and it also procs the effects of the rest of the deck, which is again, pretty annoying. And not being able to search your outs to it is, again, pretty annoying. However, I don't think it's that powerful. It, being at one, I think would be fine. I think a lot needs to be okay at one, except Venom. Screw that. Hot take, I think the reason why it's on the ban list is because people just got sick of playing against Thunder Dragons and every once in a while Konami just likes to hack a deck off at the seams just so that people play something else, especially whatever is coming out. I don't think it's broken, again, but very powerful. And then we have some honorable mentions. I actually, there's a ton of honorable mentions because fusions is like the longest running extra deck summoning mechanic that we have. So we have a huge 15 year library of cards, a lot of which are still pretty good. And one of the oldest ones we could give an honorable mention to is Blast Warrior from Another Planet. This thing uh, nukes your own board when it hits the field, but prevents your opponent from summoning anything at all they can't they just can't summon they can set but they can't summon no specials no normals deal with it you also can't summon but i mean do you do you care and his best friend naturia exterio which has just got an omni gate both of these are normally brought out with some sort of cheating the extra deck card like waking the dragons that's why i'm gonna lump them together both of which very good but i just think they are wholly outclassed by stuff that you can actually make without a cheesy effect going off Next up, I think, would be Seraphonite, uh, R.I.P. Brilliant Fusion. Sorry, Doug. They would also be doing Seraphonite a disservice not to at least mention her because a walking double summon is a hell of a freaking card. And we also have a dishonorable mention. I can't remember if we're doing this for the best of set because we also have a worst of set, so it seems kind of redundant. But I want to just use this as a... An excuse to punch on Dragon Master Knight. It's not even just Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon, which at least the 10 you can do something with. Nah, this thing's made of a fusion and a, and a ritual monster, and it's, it just gets a dumb attack boost. What a what a terrible card this is. It's incredibly disrespectful. If it wasn't for anime protagonist powers, no one would even care about this thing. It's not good. But it's not bad enough to be a worst of. It's just mediocre at best. 5k attack power, though. All right, instead of doing a sponsor video, we're gonna do a box opening of Maximum Gold. What's up guys, Dave made a one, two, one, two, and it's box day. Ah yes, box day. The day where we open a box. What's in the box? I'm, I'm keeping all of it, you know that, right? <laughs> all right, man, we're gonna open this Maximum Gold. And we're gonna do it in the void. All right, pack one in the void. This is my new setup idea for, for doing pack openings, because I can actually get this to work and set the manual focus. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. How appropriate, it's a spooky card. So, okay, so it looks like this is the gold rare space. It's not a gold rare, it's a gold rare, because it's got, all right. <laughs> so, <laughs> there can only be one. Oh, cool, Monster Reborn. And it's printed correctly. And it's, oh, I, I was kind of hoping that these would all be fucked up. That's right. okay, we got three more packs. Uh, <laughs> Fear of the Stormwind Machine Dupe. Ooh, Martial Metal Marcher. And, oh, Mecha Phantom Beast Jacuzzleane. Ah, look, it's a thing. Premium content. Cool. Is it trade-in? I had a, I mean, I have Magical Meltdown one. I'm hungry, that's about it. 
Ghost Bell and Haunted Mansion. Yeah, that's a good pull. I don't know what that means. Ooh, a big anglerfish! And Laundry Dragon Maid. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? That's sexist. <laughs> DD Warrior Lady. Well, she doesn't look like she has DDs, but all right. Number 101, Silent Honor Arc. Yay! I'm gonna preface this next pack with I am sorry. <laughs> You asked me to do this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've got 87, White Stone of Ages, that's pretty cool. Uh, shared Ride's a good one. The Monarchs Erupt, ew, where's Jason? Uh, ooh, Ghost Reaper and Winter Cherries. Ah, and House Dragon Maid, very cool. And then we got C107, no one, no one cares about a dragon. Okay, that's. Final pack, ooh. Do, do you wanna open it? Nah, you can do it. Okay. <laughs> Apparently not any good. I didn't know that there was a talent to opening playing cards, but okay, it's <laughs> fine. Should, I mean, you should see some of the other channels that do this. You Trust me, there is none. <laughs> Barry, Stash, and Stormwind, lose one turn. Ooh, infinite impermanence. This was actually ooh. a really solid fucking box. Uh, ooh, and Nibiru. I know what that one is. Uh, Noble Knight, Ector, and Mage Power. Wow, this was a really fucking good box. That's kind of fun. Out of all these, I recognize two. All right, so uh, the good stuff we got was like uh, just a mess of hand traps. We got impermanence, uh, cherries, Nibiru, uh, and the Haunted Mansion. And then we also got these two. This one's probably just a collector card. And then we got this, oh God, this gold rare looks so freaking sick. That does look pretty snazzy. And oh no, I just had a realization. I bet Monster Reborn's getting green screened out. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it is in the void. <laughs> Can you guys guess what number one is? Just go ahead, guess. A Daria, a double dog Daria. It's almost Christmas, I guess. It's Norden. Did you guess it was Norden? It was Norden. This level four monster is a fusion of two synchros and Oryxes. What a strange thing, but all the all the, the, the entity cards are all a mishmash of the other summoning types. So it, it, this is pretty on par for what they do. When this card is special summoned, special summoned, target a level four or lower in your graveyard, special summon it, but negate its effects. Oh boy, who cares? And also banish it when this card leaves the field. <laughs> it turns out when you when you exceed summon, the materials are not leaving the field. So that gets around that real easily. It's a level four, which means it's a perfect instant fusion target, just like our number 10, Millennium Eyes were Millennium Eyes were strict. <laughs> Sangria. However, what's funny is this card is banned not because of instant fusion, at least not specifically. No, it was actually being used in a dumb zodiac loop with fusion substitute? What the hell is that card called? Yeah, fusion substitute. I was I always trust your instincts, kids. <laughs> Which is just spicy polymerization, but it does let you draw a card, right? Is that, is that what this thing does? Yes. Uh, I don't think Instant Fusion was doing it any favors when they were deciding whether or not to ban the damn thing. And the fact that it summons a card from its graveyard when it's special summoned, not just fusion summoned, means if you properly fusion summon it, which, for the record, Instant Fusion does count as a proper fusion summon, means if you keep resurrecting the card, you can keep summoning crap. It's literally just an easy, accessible extra deck extender. It's probably safe to keep the card at uh, at zero simply because it is not a once per turn. And as you know, when Konami does not give cards a hard once per turn, it automatically just means that the card is going to get broken at some time in the future, no matter what. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the list. This one was a lot of fun to do, and I don't think it was just because of the sangria. So let me know in the comments below what you guys think, and how about you give me suggestions for the next list, which is the best, well, the next of this series. The next literal might be something else, but the next in this series uh, for the synchros. I'm curious what you guys think the best synchro monsters are. And remember, guys, if you don't troll about who will, I'll see you guys next time. Just a quick special thank you to all my supporters over on Patreon. You guys make the whole channel possible. You guys have no idea how much it means to me that you guys do that. If you guys want to be part of the Goblin Attack Force, link for the Patreon down in the description below. Wait just a moment. I can see you were about to click the subscribe button. Was I right? Tell me I was right. I was right, right? My Millennium Eye lets me see everything, including these other videos by Davy Boy. Don't be a stranger. You will always be welcome in my Toon World.